okay? I'd like to call the uh, <coughs> select board meeting of November 19th, to, or, yeah, I wish, <laughs> November 9th uh, to order by roll call. Smith, Joseph. Yep, Kilcorn's present by phone. Really? Sorry, John, I thought you were sleeping. <laughs> challenge this evening with Mr. Kilcoyne on the phone. I like that as much as I like Zoom meetings. Yeah, I know. I don't either. Yeah, okay, fine. All right, uh, so we're going to skip over our approval of minutes and we're going to um, move right to uh, number six on our agenda, which is, um, no, we're not doing number six, we're doing number eight, where Mr. Meridian is going to um, talk to us about a stripping program he has. <laughs> See, John, wish you were here, don't you? <laughs> Thanks for being uh, accommodating. We ended up moving our PW board meeting from yesterday night to tonight through the election. So I was over there for seven. Um, so what you have in front of you, I'm assuming you guys have a, a copy of this. So this is something that uh, Bill and I kind of came up with. If you remember, we were awarded... Uh, a pretty decent sum of money through the shared winter streets grant program um, back in 2020 by 2020 I think and um, what we found you know with the staff turnover after we started to look at what was outlined in that grant a lot of the work that was proposed was going to be a duplicate of work with a larger revitalization project and we didn't feel like it made sense to do like about half of that work and then come in and start ripping things out to bury lines and add sidewalks and then have to redo that work. So um, this was something we kind of came up with which would be a decent use of a little bit of that money. Now I, I'll be very uh, you know, clear about that. It's a very small amount of that money. Um, so the plan itself costs I think about five grand and again it's all grant money so it's nothing out of uh, out of Sterling's budget and then right now the estimate for the work that you see is about 15 and that includes um, sandblasting the existing lines away and getting a nice fresh start. So one of the goals of this plan was to really organize the parking downtown. So right now and forever, as far as I know, there's only been a single double yellow line up the middle. There's never been a white fog line and uh, there's never been defined parking spaces. So of course, with the amount of businesses that we have downtown, we have a number of crosswalks. And those crosswalks currently have, uh, you know, some small measures to try to prevent people from parking right on top of them. But really, they're not very visible and people park right on top of them anyways. So pedestrians going out to the crosswalk have cars on either side of them. They're trying to poke their heads out as people are coming around the corner, particularly right down here uh, at the intersection of Park Street. So really what this is going to do is it's going to define where vehicles can park. More importantly, it's going to define where pe vehicles can't park. And um, actually, through this plan, they estimated, based on the some photos that they had and some aerials and some you know on-site walks they did out here, about 38 parking spaces currently. And just organizing it and putting it together, we have 46 parking spaces on street presented in this plan. So uh, of course, there's a little bit of parking down. Um, Route 12 on the straight part where the sidewalk is as you come around the corner past Emma's which really no one has parked before. Um, the other benefit here is we're putting those lanes to 11 feet, the travel lanes, which is going to act as traffic calming. So we have Route 12, it's 50 miles an hour and it shoots right down to 25 as you hit Village Pizza pretty much or hit 62. Really to kind of slow everybody down, it, it kind of acts to funnel those lanes in a little bit, keep everyone going a little bit slower, narrower lanes act to slow down and calm traffic. Um, so that's kind of the, uh, was the ideas that we gave them. They gave us this plan. I had bounced back a bunch of comments and they revised it and I really wanted to get your guys' comments on it. Uh, we'll be talking about it at, at the DPW board meeting as well, but um, 
Uh, I'm open to any comments. I just thought it was uh, be nice to organize that parking up a little bit. So water-based paint, Ryan? Is there anything? It's, it's water-based paint solely because we have a bigger project coming, and there wasn't. It didn't make sense to thermoplastic. And we had an estimate for thermoplastic. It was in the thirty-five to forty thousand dollar range. It just didn't seem to make sense. And, and once the uh, the next phase of the big project is done, is it going to affect uh, how many parking places that we? That I don't know because there's going to actually, I believe that there's some bump outs in there, some more granite, some more curving, and some more bump outs at that point. Um, that would essentially replace some of these, as they call them, gore areas, the hashed areas. Uh, they'd be more physical, less paint. This this I kind of envisioned as a you know three to five year until we get to that point. Um, just a nice way to organize the downtown. Questions, David? No. Any more? No. John, any questions on? Um, no, I'm, just, I'm not. Uh, I didn't quite catch what the timing was, but I, I know it's to avoid some overlap. It looks pretty efficient. Um, what is the timing on this, uh, Brian? That, that's a bit of a tricky one. Um, we could possibly get them in. I, I, I'm hoping to get, if the weather holds out, at least get our new roads painted, um, the ones that we're paving. And there's the potential that we could try to push it through. Uh, I don't think it would hurt to wait till the spring. Uh, you're gonna get a better product for longer if we wait until the spring. You know, essentially when we plow water-based lines, it goes away pretty quickly. Um, yeah. it, it's something that we could easily have in the pipeline as like one of the first projects to get off the ground. Uh, I do envision this work being done at night. So I don't know if it'd be one night or two nights, but just with the amount of traffic, it's not worth trucks driving over our new crosswalks and tracking white paint down the road or um, you know, we, we, we'd be able to give everyone enough notice, park off Main Street tonight, go behind the fire station, come behind the town hall so that we can actually paint these lines. So up, up in the air a little bit on timing. We're, we're a little bit late, unfortunately. I think it really depends on the weather. Okay. Thank you. That would be my guess is that we'd wait till spring. I, I'm leaning that way at this point. Yeah. Great minds. You know what I'm saying? I'm glad. <laughs> Anybody else have any questions for Ryan? I, I, uh, Dick, uh, Dick Shepard, I, uh, any further uh, definition of the sidewalks that you plan to not necessarily right away, but down the road? That would be, yeah, part of that revitalization project. So uh, I don't know, I don't, not super up on that as far as how the sidewalks are going to look, but I believe what it's doing is redoing the sidewalks on both sides so that they're equal in width. And what do you mean by defined, I guess? Well, I mean, coloration. Oh, uh, I think it would be concrete sidewalks. Not sidewalks, the crosswalks. Oh, crosswalks. Oh, 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 sorry. I think you said sidewalks. Uh, no, they white with, with hash lines is what we're proposing. Um, I mean, as you know, some towns select a color to fill the inside instead of doing the hash lines. Uh, we could look into that if that's something you're interested in. At this point, we're simply proposing the latter style, as they call it. I just remember almost running over a comma here a oh, few boy. months, well, maybe about a month ago. Everybody, you just in the line, everybody wants to <laughs> And that's, that's right. something that, that we can talk about. One of the things I had asked them was colors for like what we have as the green area right now. They're, right now, they're just proposing that to be hashed as well. So everything's kind of laddered and, and dashed. If, say we want to paint them red, if we think it resembles an apple or something like that, we can choose to do that. You know, that's our choice, I believe. You know, METCD, does it matter? I don't think it'll meet the requirements, I think. Uh, okay. So then there you go. Even infill, I don't think. Perfect. I was gonna, that's, that was what I was, first thing I was going to look at is if it meets the requirements. Well, so, uh, infilling, when you, it, it's very slippery to motorcycle riders. Very true. <laughs> oh, then we don't want to do it. <laughs> and it wears away kind of unevenly and looks funny after a while. And that might be something, too, once the revitalization gets going, that you might want to look in and upgrade them or something right. like that. So, right. I know but, some towns go to, like, a stamped brick look or something like that. But for now, I'm with you. Just go simple. Okay. Um, but that's that's our opinion. Yeah. But um, I would entertain a motion to approve Ryan's presentation as far as the street. I have another question. Um, <coughs> all right. <laughs> Joe King. Hey, Joe. How are you? Good. You know I usually ask questions. It's okay. I'm here to answer. <laughs> Will we turn into 
being as bad as Hudson in terms of lane width after we moved down to 11 because it is awful. Okay. So I don't know whether you've been through, but they I have haven't. A, I know there's a roundabout there. I have There's a roundabout yep. followed by their main street, and their main street is filled with businesses. Yep. Parking both sides, very narrow lanes. It's awful. For okay. Reverse. So I don't know what the lane width there is, but. Yeah, so it, it's it's interesting. I had actually proposed 10-foot lanes to them, and they came back with 11. Um, I don't know what that lane width is either. Uh, I would hope that we don't become Hudson if Hudson is, is terrible. I think one good thing well, is... Hudson is booming, but the street... <laughs> right, right. <laughs> one good thing is, is, if you look at the plan, I think there's really only one area where the parking actually opposes itself um, on both sides in the same area. Other than that, it's very much staggered. So that may help a little bit. Uh, because of the amount of side streets we have and crosswalks and driveway entrances, it's tricky. You can't really line that parking up. So really it's four spots here, six spots here, three spots here. Well, that um, so that should help. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Additionally, Brian, I'd just like to add with the, with the narrower lane widths through town, it yeah. does in fact slow traffic down. I come through Hudson every day on my way home. And uh, it, it, it's good for the businesses because People don't generally use the crosswalks like they should. They're coming right. in between the cars, and yeah. the traffic is at a slow pace at that point. Right, right. Well, that's also a danger in Hudson because people come out from between parks. I understand that, but we can't regulate people. Right, <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> well, we could try. <laughs> Some people have death wish. No. Ah, maybe. Are you done, Mr. King? I think I'm done. Okay, anybody else have a question or answer for Mr. Meridian? Then I would entertain a motion to approve this striping plan proposed by the, uh, Ryan and the DPW. So moved. Seconded. All those in favor? So Corey and I. Smith and I. Grants and I. Thank, Thank you, guys. Ryan. Appreciate Good luck it. tonight. Thank you. So now I would entertain a motion to. Uh, Exit our regular meeting to open up public hearing regarding the release of Chapter 61 land on 53 Holden Road. I move in those words. Seconded. Okay. So, is, yeah, Rob, come sit down too. Um, so, and who's, who's to, here to speak to that? Or are you just here to listen? I'm here to see what I can answer, if anybody has any questions. Okay. Alright. Straightforward, hopefully. These people could identify themselves. Yes, okay. She doesn't want to speak, though. That's okay. She wants to keep it secret. Perfect. <laughs> Judy, Reynolds. <laughs> Judy, Judy Reynolds is here to speak. If anybody has any questions, John, on the 61A release on uh, Holden Road. Yeah. Good. Um, did you get a chance to look at it? I did. I mean, it was approved. Looking at it now, too, it was approved by all the, uh, the key board, the board of assessors, planning, yeah. and conservation not to uh, purchase. Uh, and it seems pretty straightforward. I mean, three acres being taken out on 53 Holman Road, and uh, there's no re uh, reason, obviously, for our town to purchase it. So I'm in favor of uh, voting to approve releasing this as requested. David? I'm also in favor of Okay. Then um, I would entertain a motion to actually, um, does anybody have any questions regarding this? This is a release of um, properties up on Holden Road. Hey, Maureen, one quick question. Yes. One quick question I had on the, uh, the uh, application, the uh, mortgage uh, deed. It indicated that the uh, deed is to be delivered on honor before October 27, uh, which has gone by. So I presume that that date is simply going to be updated to uh, to a current date uh, post our approval tonight. It's been updated till the end of November. It has been updated, John, till the end of November. Oh, good. Okay. All right. I didn't have that here. Thank you. Okay. So. Uh, I recommend a motion for the release of 53 Holden Road um, from 61A. Move to release in those words. Seconded. 
Any further discussion? Then roll call. Coin. Aye. Smith, aye. Cranston, aye. You're all set, Judy. Yeah. You voted to release it, but you did not vote to release Oh, release and not purchase. All right, and as John indicated, all the uh, significant <coughs> boards involved in that um, actually <coughs> have voted not to purchase and release. Correct. So that's the assessors, the planning, CDA, everybody. Everybody's on the same page. Unusual, <coughs> but good. All right, and next. Um, is uh, the public hearing for the tax classification for which we have the Board of Assessors here. And Richard, you want to introduce Rob well, and David? Start it off if you want. Uh, <coughs> Shepard, uh, member of the Board of Assessors, unfortunately, yet Donlan could not be here this evening. He's the chairman. And I don't see uh, Hannah or anywhere around, so she's also a member. Um, but <clears throat> um, we have sent you a letter, uh, which uh, you should have um, to start this off. Um, and I guess I would simply say that, uh, as I've said in the past, um, there's good news and bad news. Uh, the good news is that we have dropped the tax rate for the seventh year in a row, <clears throat> down from 1833 to now 1432. Um, Excuse me, Marvin, I, I apologize. Uh, could you ask the speaker just to come a little closer to the head table so the voice is a little clearer on the phone? Just bring now, the whole podium sure. up, Richard. You want me to uh, <laughs> just move up this way? I don't, I don't want, I want to move that thing up there. Do I want to move that? No, thank you very much. Very good. All right. You're hired. <laughs> I take it back. Thank you. Right. Thank you, dear. Uh, is that John? Is that good? Go ahead. John? All good. Much good. better. Okay, good. So uh, that is, uh, that's, that's the good news. Um, the, uh, the bad news really is that, uh, and, and I'll explain that in a few minutes, but uh, is that valuations continue to rise. And as valuations continue to rise and DOR mandates that we uh, set uh, uh, things, uh, your assessment by um, by valuations, um, your overall tax rate will go up. But um, by reducing the tax rate, we've actually offset that to some extent. Not a great extent, but a, but a, a little bit. Um, there, and the, the primary role for this meeting is to, in the end, as you see at the very end of this thing in the recommendations, is to set a tax shift. But before we get to that, um, two things. We, um, as a board, hire uh, RRG, Regional Resource Group, out of Lemonster. And we have with us tonight the president. He's been promoted, so he's, I think the last time we were here, I don't know what he was, associate uh, <laughs> or assistant vice president or something like that. But uh, David Manzello is, the, uh, is currently the president of RRG. And um, because his duties take him to other communities, he has hired and has appointed uh, Rob Heckman, who is sitting right here. Rob, thank you. Uh, and Rob will be um, in our office downstairs on Mondays, generally, uh, to uh, work on our taxation and uh, uh, various aspects of uh, the assessor's office. So with that said, I'm going to turn this over, unless somebody has any questions specifically for me. Um, I'm going to turn this over to David, and David can then uh, get, uh, get Rob to uh, participate in this as well. Good evening, everybody. Does anybody want a copy of the document? We've got a couple here. David, how long have you been working with Sterling? I have been here, uh, this would be my 18th year. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's important for people to understand. Yeah. Not, so as my role has grown uh, with Regional Resource Group and taken me into more managerial roles, uh, I'll still obviously be 
uh, a voice and connection for Sterling. Any kind of things that anybody needs can reach out to me. But uh, on the day-to-day -day tasks, um, Rob has come to us. Uh, he's been with us a few weeks, months now, a couple months. Uh, and he's got a great background as a real estate paralegal, several years doing that. Um, so he, he brings a wealth of knowledge to the job already. So that's a great thing. So I'm going to be sticking around. I'll be in the background doing, doing the values. Uh, and he's going to be doing most of the day-to-day -day type of tasks going forward. But back to our task at hand, classification hearing. Um, it's that time of year again. So um, for those that have the handout, I know the selectmen have it here. Um, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but I just want to point out some significant uh, changes from last year. Um, and then we'll talk about what the classification piece for, uh, of single or split tax rate. Uh, so on page three, I just want to point out what we're estimated uh, to raise in the levy for this year is $21,711,672.49. Uh, so it was an inevitable. Um, we've been very frugal here over the last few years. I think last year the levy only increased like 0.25% that the levy was going to have to go up. Uh, so we're seeing an increase of 6.19%, almost 6.2, uh, over last year's levy of $20,444,413. Uh, our levy ceiling, so what that represents is 2.5% of the total taxable value in town. So Sterling's current total taxable value is one billion five hundred and sixteen million one hundred and seventy eight thousand two hundred and forty six dollars two and a half percent of that means that we through overrides or whatever the town needed we could uh, uh, appropriate set thirty seven million nine hundred and four thousand four hundred and fifty six dollars uh, new growth so new growth is uh, anything that is an addition from last year that was not taxed in the prior fiscal year. So new homes, additions to your property, new lots, uh, new business, personal property, any of those types of things are new growth. So in taxable uh, dollars, we had $265,083 in new growth. Uh, it's down slightly over some prior years, but uh, Overall, it's still a pretty good number. All right, I'm going to skip down to uh, how we get these numbers to the middle grid of the levy breakdown. So you always, uh, there's a little typo there, so it should say fiscal year 22 on the middle column, not 21. We always start with 22, which was the 21,437,209. Prop two and a half uh, basically says, okay, you can add in automatically two and a half percent of the prior fiscal year's levy. So that's the 535, 930 number. We add in our new growth of $265,083 and we get to $22,238,222. If we did not have excluded debts or any thing else passed uh, through town meetings, that would be the maximum that we could raise through the levy. But we do have ex excluded debt of $287,929, which gets us to the $22,526,151. Down below that, we're going to see all of our valuations uh, by the major classes in that we value. So your residential, commercial, industrial, and personal property. Residential makes up 80, almost 89% of uh, where we raise our taxation. Um, the rest is the 3.5, 4.5, and 3.7. Uh, 
Um, so you can see that uh, residential class has climb, climbed exponentially based on market conditions. We're up 13.7% from last fiscal year. Um, but we ha do have a strong uh, industrial personal property base in the town that uh, has increased as well. So overall, our uh, valuation has cr increased 13% uh, on taxable value of the town this year. So what we're here to discuss is the shifting of the tax burden. Uh, so we have historically had a single tax rate in the town. Uh, the Board of Assessors does uh, continue to support this and recommend this for this uh, current fiscal year. Uh, Sterling is a proactive uh, farming supportive community. So we have to keep in mind that if there was a shift, uh, that affects all the chapter land folks and the farmers in town, so their land their taxations would uh, be affected by any shifts. Uh, if we were to do a, any kind of shift, because we have still a very small margin of the overall uh, percentage that's in that CIP, a 1% shift would only reduce the single rate by two cents and increase the commercial industrial person personal property rate by 14 cents. If you were to do a 10% shift, uh, it would decrease the residential rate 19 cents and increase the CIP by $1.43. Uh, so you can see what our proposed tax rate is uh, right now in the middle column at $14.32. That's down from the 1525 in fiscal 22. What does that look like on a tax impact? Um, so fiscal 23, the average single family valuation has increased from 4,010, to $465,400. Keep in mind this average single family is fictitious. Uh, this is just our total valuation of single families divided by the total number of single families. There's a lot of variations of <laughs> style, size, acreage, uh, and so forth. But just to give you an idea of what uh, an average bill change would be. Uh, so the average increase, $55,000. Average tax increase would be $406 for the year. Not per bill, but for the year. Uh, so again, the Board of Assessors recommends keeping a single shift factor of 1.0 uh, with our levy to be $21,711,672.49. And we have an excess levy capacity uh, in the amount of $814,478.51. What that means is that's extra money that if we needed to, we could appropriate that, but uh, even with the 6% increase in the levy, we've been still pretty frugal and haven't used all the levy that we have. So that is my presentation. Open for questions. Introduce. Yeah, we do. In the beginning. Yep. Uh, yes. Pay attention, Richard. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you should stand up and say a few words. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Robert Heckman. I am from the area. I grew up in Lemonster. Uh, I spent six or seven, six and a half years or so as a real estate paralegal and uh, signed up with RRG to join on and become an assessor. So I'm pretty new with the situation, but I think I have a good background. And if you want to work with me, I'd love to work for you. So thank you. Thanks, Rob. You're welcome. Uh, David, do you have any questions? I do not. I think they did, a, they did a thorough job on putting this together. Yeah. I could put John on mute. <laughs> <laughs> we, we do have a time. We'll put him on. I did have one question, all right. It's okay. I know you do. <laughs> Go ahead, John. 
it's not a major one, just for uh, my own education. I just see this thing once a year. Or on uh, page three, under terminology, just a clarification where it says uh, under levy, it says this represents a 6.2 percent increase over last year's levy of 20 million 414. So I was wondering why that number is. I know these probably because it's fluctuation. Everything fluctuates between now and town meeting, but in a perfect world, would that levy number of 20 million 444 drop down to the bottom of the page where it starts the fiscal year 2022 levy, where it shows that as 21 million 437209, so a few Right. Uh, so over. that becomes a fluctuation between now and, and your fiscal year end. Uh, no, that's because we didn't use the full levy last year. Last year we had uh, oh, I, over, a, uh, I think it was uh, just over a million dollars, or just under a million dollars of excess levy capacity. So like we okay, had... I was just thinking that uh, since we, would, we, wouldn't, we wouldn't use the full levy, that's why I thought that the, that number, the fiscal year 2022 levy, might be the actual levy shown above of 20 million 444. That was my only question. I just you know, apples to apples, but right. No, we, we always use what we could appropriate, not what we actually did appropriate. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, it's, it shows we still have a good excess capacity uh, this year too. Uh, you know, it's, you know, people get confused sometimes. I mean, but the, the bottom line here for the for the taxpayers, the residents, to know is that given all the increases in inflation, and everything else, six point. You know, four nine percent uh, increase in the residential valuations. That translates into the four hundred dollar average tax increase on the average homeowner's uh, uh, residential uh, valuation. So, as I, you know, as Bill mentioned to me, that's a hundred dollars a quarter. Now, hopefully, we can keep that the same. But again, a lot of numbers fluctuate between now and and uh, fiscal year end in June, including our town meeting. So a lot happens there, and that that will affect. What, what the bottom lines are here, but at least the tax rate has gone down to offset the uh, increase in the valuation. So, uh, yeah, good job. Very nice job uh, putting all this together. Thank you. Okay. Anybody have any questions for David? Um, since the the first half bills were an estimated, yep. what will this represent in the latter? two quarters in terms of if you use this average family uh, So here. typically you will see your actual bills, your actual bills higher than <coughs> what your prelims yeah. were. Um, so yeah, they, what I'm asking is, you know, it looks like $400, but is, is it really going to be 200 in each one of them? Uh, it, or it's, are you using it, the average valuation here, or is it going to hit harder than that? Uh, it's all dependent on the value and um, of the property, so it could be wor uh, different. Um, you almost said yeah. worse. <laughs> it could, could be worse. Um, so yeah, it's very tough to say what it would be. So if it was the average property, um, that would have been I guess thing. hypothetically it should be 200 per bill. Yeah, but is it going to be based on? the estimated tax bill for the evaluation at 465 400 That would have been good to have in this presentation. Yeah, okay. Well, food for thought to be had for next year. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I do want to just quickly say that I know uh, people are anxious with the market changes of, as far as uh, mortgage interest rates and what's the market going to do. Uh, just to point out to everybody that assessed values are almost two years. We're about 18 months behind current market. So come calendar year 23, if we start to see values fall, we will react to it, but that won't affect us until fiscal 25. Um, as of now, I am like looking at the market in Worcester County almost monthly to see what's going on. Uh, I'm still, I just did a report today, uh, still seeing people paying 1% over asking price on properties. Uh, so it's down from 5% over, um, so it's come down a little bit, but it's still a very strong market with people paying over asking prices. 
So do you base um, the evaluations on what it sells for as opposed to what it's actually valued at? So if I buy a house for 1% more, you're going to do that valuation on the 1% more? If it's on the open market and there's a willing buyer and a willing seller with no duress, those are the sales that we use for the target of valuation adjustments. Because it's been crazy. Yeah. And it's always based on the January 1st of the previous year. Previous year. So. All right. Anything else? Yeah. Just yeah. One. one more question. Right. Sure. Since you projected a 13% this year, do you have any forecast for the January 2023 estimate? I'm a finance guy. So yeah, I no, I don't, because we, we don't get the deeds for like quite a while after things close. So uh, we don't even have the full calendar year 22 yet to look at. To when, when will we have the valuation roll for calendar year 2023? Uh, this time next year. In January. For calendar 22 or 23? The, the new assessment in 2023, when does that come out? Um, the values are approved and set for um, fiscal 23, and we will work to get those on the uh, assessor's web page Monday. 2023? For fiscal 23, yes. Based on January 1st, 2022. Two. Yeah. Okay. I just want to add that uh, this this tax rate that I mentioned earlier, in 1432, which is uh, you know it's been coming down. And obviously, um, a lot of that uh, we give credit to department heads in the town who keep their budgets within reason, um, to the finance committee uh, who goes over those budgets and looks at it and really scrutinizes them to keep them down. So it's not just the Board of Assessors that sit here and uh, demand that we try to bring the tax rate down, but uh, you know, it's nice that it's, been, it's come down for seven years in a row. Uh, I think the high was 1833, I mentioned that earlier, but um, it's, it, hopefully we can continue to do that and it's, it's, it's our overall uh, fiscal um, situation that we have with our department heads. Uh, they keep uh, things in check, and they certainly try to do things. And we, we have a finance committee that kind of demands that they that they that they do that, if if at all possible. So okay, thank, thank you very you. much. All right, so we need to um, take a vote on this, John. And yep. uh, so I would make a motion that the Sterling uh, Select Board votes in accordance with MGL Chapter Forty. Section, I'm sorry, I have to read this all, people, but out loud. <laughs> Section 56, as amended, the percentage of local tax levy, which will be, um, which will be borne by each class of real and personal property relative to setting the fiscal year 2023 tax rates and set the residential factor at point, oh no, one point, with a corresponding CP shift of one. Uh, pending certification of the town's annual tax recap by the Mass Department of Revenue. I killed coin second. That was a lot. <laughs> it's like move forward, David. <laughs> yeah, we'll move forward. Okay. All those in favor? Kilcoin aye. Smith aye. Cranston aye. Really, in essence, we don't have a lot to say about it, do we? <laughs> Bottom line, yeah. At the end of the day. Yeah, like Richard said, what we need to do is just keep doing what the finance committee does. So, you know, you, I mean, you obviously have the right to be able to do that, but uh, I might mention, and I, David didn't mention this, but the city of Fitchburg, I think it was last year or the year before, went from a shift of two to a shift of one. And part of the reason they did that was because they're losing a lot of industrial base and they wanted to bring that back into the community. Um, so they've obviously recognized the change here. And uh, I don't know if there are other communities you may see others that are doing the same thing, but. Um, sure. Okay, thank, thank you, thank you very gentlemen. Much. Thank Rob, you thank you. Welcome to Sterling. Thank you, appreciate David, it. David, congratulations thank on the promo. Hope thank to you. see you around. Richard, thank you. Okay.
with all that being said and done, I would entertain a motion to exit our public hearing on this November 9th, 2022. Well moved. Seconded. All those in favor? Will Corner aye. Smith aye. Grants and I. And with that being said, I move to open our regular meeting and proceed with our agenda. Good, good. Seconded. So All those in favor? Bill <coughs> Corey, aye. Smith, aye. Grants and I. Okay. All right. And now we'll, we'll get to, um, <laughs> I know, right? We're going to get to Mr. Lavin for the New England Truck Design, Inc. Um, working for the uh, Class 1 dealer's license yes. for Lavinster Road. And I think it's important. And why don't you introduce yourself? Hi, my name is Kevin Lavin from New England yeah. Truck Design. Yeah. Okay. Tell the public what you're doing, Kevin. Well, um, we're looking to sell new equipment trailers. Uh, it's an extension of a product line we sell currently, EB truck bodies. They make beautiful trailers. Uh, the truck bodies, we've never needed a permit because they're not registered vehicles. And so um, I'm just looking to extend our product line and uh, represent them. I, I believe I'm the sole dealer for EB equipment in Massachusetts. So um, we hope to draw some more people our way and start selling their, their, their equipment trailers. Any questions, David? Nope, just a statement. I know Kevin, I've been to his establishment. He runs a nice operation. Very clean. Okay. Is this a brand new operation, Kevin, or have you operated this at a location prior to this? Yes, I've been there uh, over 20 years, uh, 275 okay. Lemonster Road. And so this is just an addition to what we do now. We're, we're known for our custom aluminum truck bodies, and we build uh, pretty well all over the eastern part of the country. Uh, you know, on a small scale. Um, but just I'm looking to extend our product line. Yeah, good. Thank you. Thank you. Well said. Yes, and I would um, mention that you've already been to the ZBA and they have approved this. As yes, far I, I applied for the special permit and they have approved it, yes. So, with that being said, I have no problems with um, entertaining a motion to approve the Class 1 auto dealer License for Mr. Lavin at 275 Lancaster Road. So moved. Seconded. All those in favor? Before and aye. Smith, aye. Grants and I. And thank you for your patience. Thank you. Thank, thank, you, thank you very operating. much. Thank yeah. you for operating in Sterling. We appreciate yeah. that. You have a nice night. Good luck. Thank you. Uh, next on the agenda is well, we started talking about this at our last meeting very briefly, uh, but the Senior Center. Um, is looking to um, do some work over there and they would like us to consider uh, giving them some of the remaining senior center building funds. So uh, we didn't get into it deeply because I felt as though the senior center, um, Liz particularly, um, should be able to give a presentation as well as Mr. Mackey who is representing the building committee. So Liz, you want to? You look surprised. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Surprise! <laughs> we do have the information, but I think yes. general public, et okay. cetera, and so on. A general summary of the proposal. So um, thank you, Select Board, for this opportunity to present. And um, in summary, um, the Senior Center Director came to the Council on Aging with concerns about the curb appeal and um, the condition of the outside area. And um, upon hearing those concerns, the council voted to um, ask for assistance from a landscape contractor and a plan was developed that focused on three areas. The grassy areas that are overrun with crabgrass and are not drought tolerant and would require irrigation, curb appeal, especially the berm area, and low use of the patio area. So those were the three areas that we were um, looking at. Um, we had great assistance from the DPW who have agreed to help us with the berm area. We've reached out to scouts. They're going to help us with some of the recommendations for phase one um, with the mulching, and they will be doing that as Eagle Scout projects beginning in um, spring. And David, I'm sorry, 
I didn't give my name and address. I was, <laughs> you were looking at me. <laughs> Liz Pape, Elliott Road. <laughs> um, so we did a phased approach, and the first phase was to correct, uh, to amend some of the soil in that area and uh, do that. We started on that this fall. We have done some of the um, dethatching. We've um, instituted a maintenance plan, and the first phase of that maintenance plan from an outside contractor has uh, begun, and that involved liming and fertilizing that area. Um, in addition, um, we um, planted some trees and shrubs for curb and visual appeal. And that is part of our proposal would be that um, the amount of that was $2,344. And we are requesting of the building committee funds in the amount of $1,144. Um, for the second part of phase one, which would be for the spring, which would involve um, the area that is very drought um, intolerant and um, has a lot of crabgrass that would need some um, amendments and reseeding. And um, we haven't gotten firm quotes yet on that, but we're estimating uh, based upon walkthroughs that I've done with landscape contractors approximately $8,000, which also includes watering of those areas, and so we are asking for $4,000 from building funds, $4,000 to come from Sterling Seniors uh, Center funds from the um, gift account. And the, the first part also involves um, from the gift account. So we built a plan that has phases in it, and we are executing on each phase, and then assessing the impact on use of the outside area. The second phase involves some work around the patio area, which has low use currently. And so the second phase would possibly involve a shade device over a portion of that patio area, as described in the landscape plan that I sent to you, as well as some plantings for visual appeal around that area. And for that, it's more difficult to um, come up with an estimate since we haven't decided on what a plan or what a design would be for that trellis area. But that would be primarily, that trellis shading area would be primarily funded from the building funds. Um, and then the plantings could be funded from the um, gift account. So in summary, um, we're looking for um, shared resources between the building committee funds and what is in the senior center gift account. Okay. Any questions? Uh, $8,000 that you mentioned, is yes. that the one time fee? Is it an annual fee? Is there maintenance attached to that? Um, no, that is for the planting, the seeding of um, and soil amendment of area two, which is that lower area facing onto um, Muddy Pond Road. And so that's just the one-time seeding of that, we hope. Um, but then it would be the watering. And so that's why we're saying we're really looking for a solution that involves planting drought-tolerant seed or plants there so that there is not a lot of watering that needs to be done um, for that with walkthroughs with landscape contractors, some were suggesting putting in an irrigation system, and that's just not a possibility for, for the senior center right now. Um, for this initial uh, seating, et cetera, and so on, do you have a maintenance plan? Yes, and we have. Taking care of that? So um, the maintenance plan is being done through a recommendation of the DPW grounds manager by Old Stone Landscape. And it was Old Stone Landscape that we used to do this initial fall um, maintenance of the liming and fertilizing. And then there are four separate times that they do um, different kinds of maintenance on that area. Overseeding, uh, grub control, um, we control those types of things. So we have a calendar of those four separate events. Um, there are some optional items for core aeration, 
um, and um, as needed. Um, and every one of those events has a price tag associated with it. And how is that going to be funded as you move forward? That is funded through the Senior Center Operations account that was already put into the budget per our town administrator's um, recommendation. So that is taken care of. And the estimate that we have received is within that budget line item. That's currently in the fiscal year, in this year's budget. Right. Already, we've already but established I mean, the maintenance. Yeah. It's, it will be it's in our maintenance budget forward. in the Senior Center Operations okay. budget. This is Veronica Buckley, Sorry. if anybody knows. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Speaking on the sidelines. Sorry. Um, Okay, so so it becomes a regular part of the senior center operations budget going and forward, and that's above and beyond what you already have budgeted for no, the no. plowing, et cetera. That that the senior center. Okay, um, Veronica Buckley, the director of the senior center, just so um, there was a a, a lot of three thousand dollar allotment to um, um, maintenance of the grounds that was put into this budget this current year, so it's already in the fiscal year twenty two budget. We're anticipating that with that amount, we will be able to continue fiscal year 23 with just a repeat of that amount. Mm -hmm. That's what we're, um, as this plan was done, as, as Liz explained, it is to be low maintenance and drought tolerance. So it, we feel that that's a reasonable amount to, to move forward with. Does that make sense? And I do not budget plowing. If that's what you're asking, that's and it's kind of included in your operations budget. Well, no, I guess no, it's, it's, it's included moved in over. the DPW. Yes, yeah, so it's not in our budget. Yeah. But the maintenance, the grounds maintenance, is included in our budget. Okay. And that's going to be done by an outside. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Um, DPW has been tremendous in helping us with this landscaping plan, providing advice, walking through the project with me several times, and saying that they will assist with the berm renovation work. Um, I cannot say enough good words about all members of the DPW for their assistance. John, do you have any questions? Yeah, I just wanted my protest just came on while Veronica was speaking, so I didn't catch all of it, but it's about to turn off. But I think I got enough gist of it. But my question, not that you need to know that, but my, uh, my question is, uh, it's a good proposal. I just want to make sure I understand that the finances, uh, the request from, uh, uh, for the phase one or phase two, it looks like phase one uh, the proposal is to split the cost, uh, uh, which would be 5200 each. So 5200 would be requested from the Senior Center Building Committee. And then uh, you want to mental planning, that's $2,344. So I'm guessing that's about another call of 1250 no, I'm John. At, I'm coming up to about sixty-four, sixty-five hundred dollars, which I think is reasonable. But am I missing something? Is there more, a higher request or not? John, you're going to be really excited because what I'm going to tell you is it's way more reasonable because in the narrative that I gave, where I gave that estimate of um, approximately fifty-two hundred dollars, um, that was for the fall and spring work. Um, the fall work actually came in at twenty three forty four, so that's on the table on the third page, and so the fall activity total is twenty three forty four, twelve hundred funded through the gift account at the senior center, and eleven forty four requested of the building funds. Okay. Well, I mean, it seems it seems reasonable. For, I mean, it seems like we're putting aside, we're not depleting the entire amount left over in the building fund. So I think if, if I want to, it sounds reasonable to me. I mean, it looks like we're preserving enough money to uh, earmark it for a, uh, a trellis or, a, a, uh, you know, a shade device over the uh, patio, which hopefully won't cost a, a fortune. But am I, am I, am I mistaken on that? I think that's... Yeah. Uh, I have it, right? Okay. All right. John, yeah. Yep. Right now, we're just talking about the first phase. We're going to listen to Mr. Mackey. You have his information also. The building yep. committee has um, different ideas. Not that we don't want to share the money. I can't even say we anymore because we're a defunct committee. But um, yep. so 
we'll listen to what Mr. Mackey has to say, that he sent us his information also, and he speaks for the building, the, the full okay. building committee. Yep. Um, That's good. Thank you. I got, I got, before I got we make a decision. So Any other questions? Okay. It's 5144. You're asking from there right now? The Correct. The 4,000 and the 1144? Correct. Okay. 4,000, yes, yes, yes. And the 4,000 from the building committee is an estimate. Right. We are anticipating that going out for quotes will lower that, and we are looking for alternatives to the irrigation piece because that was irrigation provided by a contractor, and we're trying to figure out what an alternative would be, so that would eliminate a substantial amount of that estimate. Thank Just you. one yes. thing, if you want to make a note. Um, somebody had told somebody else <laughs> that um, you were planning on planting clover, and the neighbors are not happy about that idea, just as you move forward. Okay, so... Um, Okay, thank you. I don't know if that was really a thing or not, but... <laughs> um, that was one of the drought-tolerant questions that I was asking of the DPW. What would be ramifications of that? I asked that of contractors. We were also asking about what kinds of drought-tolerant, like native seeds were available. So it's still in research phase right now for figuring out what to do with that area, too, that I call Death Valley. Because it's kind of sad. <laughs> oh, there's sadder. <laughs> Thank you. Mr. Mackey? Good evening. Uh, speaking for the um, building committee, uh, I'd like to point out a couple of things. Uh, first of all, I'm very pleased to see that some of the numbers that are being presented tonight are significantly lower than the numbers that were originally presented a couple of months ago, and that's a good thing. Uh, this issue really is about the order of the senior center projects and the costs. Do we do the landscaping first and then the uh, pergola or uh, trellis or whatever the shelter is, or we do it in the reverse. Is that how we're going to spend the approximately $38,000 that we have available from, from being very careful with uh, the uh, building funds um, and also accepting almost $200,000 in donations from foundations, individuals, businesses, banks, and so on. Uh, the priority, in my opinion, or in the opinion of the building committee, should be to give the seniors protection from the sun for outdoor activities at the patio itself. Um, unfortunately, skin cancer is a progressive thing, and uh, it's probably a good idea to keep uh, everybody, not just uh, senior citizens, under as much reasonable protection as we can. And so that would be the reason for having uh, a pergola or some type of shelter present. Um, the, the shelter, of course, would be a permanent feature. The landscaping uh, is dependent to some degree on what Mother Nature throws our way. Uh, you know that this year in July and August, we had almost no precipitation. In September and October, we had well over 12 inches of precipitation. That's three times the, the normal monthly amount. Um, in both cases, both the uh, shelter and the landscaping, requires maintenance. The maintenance on the shelter, depending on the materials that are used, could either be minimal or it could be significant. And it's one of the factors in choosing the material for the shelter. Uh, in, in a communication from the senior center, uh, the question that was raised by the building commission uh, committee dealt with uh, who is raising the money uh, that they uh, would like to spend in later years. Uh, if it's money that's coming from the Friends of the Sterling Seniors, I would just point out that, I can't speak for them, but I can point out that uh, the money that we're currently putting into the Senior Center is pretty much our maximum amount, and it would be asking a lot to ask us to contribute a significant amount over a number of years for the project. Um, landscaping uh, what I saw originally was a five-year plan with uh, $20,000 budgeted annually. I hear this evening that that idea, at least for the first two years, is significantly less than that. And as I said, that's a step in the right direction. Uh, to put that into perspective, that $20,000 a year, 
the recreation department uh, takes care of the Griffin Road and Muddy Pond uh, uh, fields for about $15,000 in a year. So if, if the amount that we're eventually looking at is closer to the 20, I'd say that that sounds excessive. DPW does do the mowing. Uh, they're not able really to do the detailed maintenance. And we heard tonight from Liz that um, DPW has been extremely cooperative in the past, not only with this project, but tons of other departments in town. And also, um, that they're willing to help out wherever they can. We have to consider the climate variations. We're in a period, clearly, where the variations in climate are somewhat unpredictable. And whatever is done with the landscaping needs to be taken into consideration. Uh, the concept of having uh, drought-resistant plants is a valid one. Um, they don't call them drought-proof plants. No one calls them that. Uh, and that's because of the climate variations. Uh, the maintenance plan, uh, if it's limited to um, a three, was it three thousand um, dollars? That that sounds like a reasonable number. So there are a lot of uh, issues here that the board has to consider. There are a variety of ways in which you can answer the situation, and I'm not going to enumerate those ways, but. We have $38,000, and I'll go back to what I said earlier. Do we provide a shelter that's a permanent thing and, and can be done in the spring once and done? Or do we put that money into landscaping over a longer period of time? Um, I would prefer to have a fixed structure uh, that's there for everybody to utilize uh, for the future. Questions? David, any questions? Well, <clears throat> no, I don't have any questions. Have any answers? No, but I just, you know, in a perfect world, both of these projects would be nice to get funded and get completed. Uh, but I'm going to have to lean towards Mr. Mackey's idea of, uh, uh, I think, a, a shelter on the back deck is probably a better investment at this point in time, whereas Death Valley is pretty much dead. Right? So I think um, I'd have to agree, agree with you, Dick, on the on the shelter behind the building and, and try to come up with a reasonable plan to uh, do the landscaping in future years. I don't we think can't, we can't I can respond it. to that, David. I don't think it's unreasonable for the senior center to, to budget uh, a specific amount for maintenance of, of that uh, grassed area. If you take a look at it, depending on how much rain we get, uh, it is Death Valley in some places, no question about it. And it does need attention. It needs to be reseeded. It needs to be fertilized bugified, or whatever else goes on uh, four times a year. So uh, the, I don't believe the building committee has any objection to improving the, that part of the landscaping. It really is about how we're using the money and in what order. John? Do, do, yeah, Dick, uh, uh, do we know what, what are the senior center folks, do we know what a uh, sun shelter would cost uh, for, for that structure up there? Yeah, the numbers that we've seen, based on kits that are delivered to the site, go from about $26,000 for uh, a shelter that's about 28 feet long by 18 feet wide. And that number goes up to about thirty-five dollars or $36,000 and does not include local contractors that would have to assemble it. So you can tack on you can tack on probably another four to six thousand dollars for a contractor mm -hmm. to assemble the kits that uh, all of the uh, vendors that we looked at, we looked at three, all of them provide uh, similar products. And we did look at, I mentioned earlier that the materials can make a difference. Uh, if you use wood, it's the cheapest way to do it. Unfortunately, wood uh, has to have more maintenance than anything else and probably ultimately has a shorter lifespan. Uh, if you use vinyl or a uh, plastic-like product, uh, that has a longer lifetime, less maintenance uh, than the wood. And then if you used uh, aluminum or, or other metal, uh, that would have the longest lifetime, but it's also the most expensive. So the one in the middle is probably the, the vinyl or uh, a composite product like that. Yeah. 
Okay, well, again, again, as I mentioned earlier, I think it's wise to, uh, to at least set aside enough of that building committee fund uh, towards the, uh, the shelter, the sun shelter, and hope, and hope that it's not, once it's the design uh, comes in and we know what it costs, hopefully there's some excess money available towards to get, you know, to contribute to the landscaping up there as well. And I don't know if uh, that's pie in the sky or not, but I, I, that's why I asked the question what we think it might cost. I think maybe we ought to reserve until we reserve enough of it, or all of it for now, until we know what the, uh, a shelter would cost, and then, and then go from there. Well, I'm going to kind of step away from the conversation because I have been involved in this from, from the beginning as far as the building is concerned. So, um, but, you know, when I say Dick speaks for the building committee, uh, he's speaking for the, the four members that were still available after we realized we weren't a committee anymore. But, um, so... As, you know, my only thing is we've said from the beginning that if there were any monies left over after the shelter was built, then it would go back to the senior center and to the landscaping. We've said that from the beginning. The other thing, and I think this is probably the bigger part of it, is the committee that the COA has put together for the landscaping project, which includes a pergola actually in the second phase, um, as Dick said, they want to be involved in choosing the design, et cetera, and, um, and I don't think anybody has a problem with that. Um, I'm all for, you know, there were some suggestions that uh, you know, we pass this over to the TA to um, actually uh, execute as far as um, how and when and where the funding comes from, because you're more aware of what funding is available. I know there's, there's you have other funding too, Veronica, that you can use towards, like the, the shelter. Correct. Yeah, so, so it doesn't all have to be the 38 from the building committee. There's formula money that can be used towards the pergola, which gives more money to the landscaping, because you can't use the formula money for landscaping. Right, formula right. grant would be for senior needs. Right. And shelter on the patio would be part of a senior right. need, correct. So, so we can, you know, put the monies all in a pot and share it, and then, and then move forward. May I just make one clarification, please? Yeah. Um, for the folks that are out there going to be listening to this um, over the next few days, um, there is no $20,000 capital budget request being put in for landscaping currently. So, uh, you know, um, it, that was stated, and the Senior Center and the Council on Aging have decided not to do that, so I want the townspeople to know that. Our, our intention is to keep costs of the landscaping plan as low as possible and to self-fund from the variety of sources that are currently available. So, to, to it makes it sound that, like this is a very expensive landscaping plan and it is not. We are working very, very hard to keep the costs down. Yeah, and so far, so good. Yeah. So, um, so that, that would be, I think, Bill, if you would work with all of the people involved, you know, Richard, myself, or Kevin Beaupre, who is also with the COA, and Liz and, and Gail, and come together. Obviously, right now, we're not going to do anything other than that what you've already done. Um, you know, everything will have to wait until the spring. But we want to assure Mr. King that we are not going to the town meeting for any money. <laughs> All right? So you can breathe now, Joe. <laughs> All right, I think there's enough funds amongst gift, the formula, and the building that we can all share it and get everything done that we need to get done in the spring. Um, and yes, include the landscaping committee and, and some of the designs that we've already looked at. Okay? Good. You feel good about that? Overjoyed. Yeah, sure you are. <laughs> Richard, you all right? Liz, Gail, Veronica, Joe? Yes. All right.
So we don't need to actually take a vote on that, do we? Unless you want us to underscore the fact that you, Billy, are at large in charge. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay, so that's that, and then we're going to move along um, to our very patient, Mr. French. Ooh. Ooh. Save it. <laughs> oh my God, you're a killer, John. <laughs> I didn't know you could hear me. <laughs> oh, we all heard you, and the room is full. So thank you. I'm Jim French, and I'm here uh, representing the Sterling Land Trust, and um, and the Land Trust has been assisting uh, Miss Phyllis George and her five children who own property over on South Nelson Road who have applied to the uh, Division of Conservation Services for a conservation to place a conservation restriction on approximately 23 of the 25 acres that they own there. The family is keen on placing protective covenants on the property. It's actually uh, uh, considered prime woodland. Um, and uh, uh, it, the exciting thing about this property is that it abuts uh, Sterling's largest wild roadless area of over a thousand acres uh, and it has uh, uh, it, it's a, a nice addition to uh, uh, a large conservation block in the wildlife corridor in that part of town. So the Division of Conservation Services requires municipal approval for conservation restrictions before they approve it at their end in their Boston office. So that is my purpose for being here this evening. Yes, I am. Okay. Would you have any, John, do you have any questions for Mr. French with regards to um, this property on South Nelson? Yes. No, I mean, it's in perpetuity. I mean, it's uh, on, I, I guess, 22.85 acres. Is that correct? Yes. It is in perpetuity. And it's a 23-acre 20, uh, parcel, I believe. Approximately. It abuts other properties that are also in the preservation. It abuts other conservation land, uh, conservation restriction land. It abuts uh, Division of uh, Department of Conservation and Recreation land. It abuts other Sterling Land Trust properties. So I, I would think this would be in the spirit of, uh, of, of the open space uh, portion of the master plan as well. I, I mean, I'm trying to think of any negative uh, uh, Possible, you know, items here. I, I really don't. I don't see any real downside unless I'm missing something. You're not. Go ahead, David. Oh, I, uh, I think it's a great move to preserve open space. So, um, Jim, the, the logging that we see here is just. Um, yeah, she happens. Out. She has a forest stewardship plan that she recently hired a forester to put on her property. And that forester has arranged for a, a thinning of some of the timber on her property to bring Phyllis George some income that she uh, that she could enjoy on her property. And the whole idea of preserving this woodland is that into the future there will be cycles of forest products coming off it in perpetuity. So. So under a conservation restriction, the family continues to own the property, but the conservation restriction is held by the Sterling Land Trust. Okay. So what would you like us to do? I would like you to uh, kindly vote approval to sign the conservation restriction so that we can then bring it back to the uh, Secretary of Environmental Affairs in Boston. Her final signature makes it real. Um, is this the only copy we have that we have to sign off on? Yeah. Okay. Per chance we sign off on it. I would entertain a motion to approve this. Um... There was a hand up in the audience. Oh, I'm sorry. Is, Go ahead. Is there an impact on the property tax assessment of doing this? You're asking me that question? Yes. <laughs> I'll try to answer. So, uh, I'm going to say no because she has the property in Chapter 61 for forest and classification. 
She will continue to be the owner of record and will continue to be in Chapter 61, so the tax consequences do not change. That's it. So I'd entertain a motion to approve uh, Ms. George or Mr. French's request uh, for the restrictions on South Nelson Road. So moved. Seconded. All those in favor? Kilcorn, aye. Smith, aye. Grants, and aye. Thank you very much. All right, thank, thank you. you, Mr. French. Um, EDC appointment, are we actually doing that this evening? Is um, he coming in? I don't see him. I'm disinvited. Okay. Um, so we have a volunteer application for, for the EDC, Joe. Sorry. <laughs> the Economic Development Committee, uh, Mr. Stover. Um, yeah, he doesn't really have, uh, EDC has interviewed him, yes. sat with him, yes. and you're all moving him forward. Yes. Okay, and have you met him, Bill, yes. also? He was at a meeting uh, once Yeah. Okay, and he's a board director and a CEO. He's just one of those people, Joe, but he wants to start at the EDC so far. I'm fine with that. Okay. <laughs> I'm their liaison, so I would encourage it. Okay. Um, any thoughts, comments, David? I have none. John, any thoughts or comments on Mr. Stover <laughs> being appointed to the EDC? No, well, looks like a good volunteer. Happy to have him. He walks and he breathes, so <laughs> I'll make him up. <laughs> Yeah, I would say thank you, Mr. Silver, and I look forward to meeting him in the next couple of weeks. Um, yep. I'd entertain a motion to appoint Mark Stover to the Economic Development Committee. So moved. Seconded. All those in favor? Before I Smith, aye. Grants and I. Um, Kama, can you send him a note and tell him he needs to come in and um, get sworn in and take the ethics test? Just clearing my throat. Oh, I beg your pardon? Just clearing my throat. Okay. I thought you wanted more attention. Okay. All right. Next thing on the agenda is a town accountant update. Uh, so as you know, back in April, uh, Fred had left us for another community and stayed on part-time um, with the assistance of the assistant treasurer um, taking care of things in the building. Uh, we have the opportunity to bring uh, Fred back full-time uh, if there are no objections. Um, yeah, that's about it. Okay, what would his duties be when you uh, So he would be back as the, uh, what he was when he left, uh, the operations manager and the town accountant, so he would take on a couple projects, uh, IT and, and some of the facilities things that um, the town administrator doesn't get to sometimes. You're going to pass this whole senior center thing off on him, aren't you? No. <laughs> That's the way he is. Um, David, any questions? Uh, not so much a question, but a concern about the individual that has stepped up and been performing their duties right. on a part-time basis. Mm -hmm. uh, are we concerned about any follow-up from that? She's aware, and... You know, it was temporary until something happened, so. Yeah. John, any comments? No, no I mean, uh, we're not happy. We know Fred's background is very quality. It's excellent. And uh, we'd like to know, I think, have him back. But the one gave us one, I'd like to continue to see uh, Liz somehow uh, interact with, with Fred going forward and some of the things she's already done. Uh, uh, because, as we know, none of us are getting any younger. Fred won't be here forever either. So I like to, you know, let me make sure this knows this so Jesus. Similar for upward mobility uh, and, and accounting as well as uh, her own her role right now. So I think she did a great job. and uh, But I think it'll work. I think it'll work. I know Fred well, and as we all do. I think he'll incorporate uh, 
some of those duties uh, into what he, he's doing under operations as well, and it'll be helpful for all for the town for all of us. So I'm, I'm pleased with it. Oh, by the way, it's not going to cost us anymore, is it? <laughs> I gotta tell you, John. I wish you were sitting here so I could slap you. <laughs> Just say it. I'm here, Marvin. I trade for bruises on my my hands. All right. No, I think it's it's great, and I do know that Liz um, has other duties that you know this lightens her load a little bit. Um, you know, all the uh, personnel issues and so on and so forth. So, all right, and. Um, Again, we don't need a vote on that. It's just a hiring. Yes, Mr. Pagano. Can the audience know why he left and why he's coming back? He left because he thought he had a better job opportunity in less hours, and it did not really pan out. Um, he walked he into, us. and he missed <laughs> us, and he walked into a firestorm. Um, they weren't completely upfront with him, so um, he's been looking. And um, when we heard he was looking and we asked if he would be interested in coming back, you know, because we haven't filled a position at all. And gave it some thought, talked to Bill, coming back. So it's a good thing. Um, it's a good thing. It's a good well, it, particularly the, not just the accounting portion of it, but it was big as far as our IT portion in town, you know, and making sure everything was where it should be, how it should be, and working um, in conjunction with Guardian for our IT services. Also working with SMLD with regards to the fiber, getting it into town, expanding it. He was integral in getting us the $350,000 that we got to actually start that um, program when Sean was here. So it was Fred and Sean that brought that money to town, and it was just built on that, and Fred was a big part of that. That's always yep. a plus in, in municipalities is when you have somebody that can, you know, white, yeah, white, write and work grants, so. Well, things, like, things like that should be brought up more often. Things like what? What these people do for us. Yeah. yeah. Agreed. You right. should be You should be bringing it up a little more often. It I like that be. idea. And you know what I'm going to, right now, we're going to bring up the fact that what you do for us as far as mowing and driving the bus and all your volunteer work, that should be, I mean, not just at the senior center where, yeah, you have the lunch every once in a while, but in general, you know, um, there's so many people that should be recognized for what they do, volunteers as well as employees. I mean, I can't even imagine what we would do without Kama. You know, she's really, and people don't know half of the stuff that she does and the things she finds. So I agree with you, Bob. I think those are things that could, could and should come to the forefront. Maybe we put that on our agendas. Thank you. I somebody every single time. I like it. I'm just, you get know. More productive, huh? Productivity. Huh? You might get more productivity. Well, I'm not sure about that, Bob. <laughs> you might just think we're better than the most, right? Okay. Next thing on our agenda is, if you remember, we um, got into a contract um, with the PFAs a couple of weeks ago, actually our last meeting, I think, um, or two meetings ago. But anyway, you want to tell us what's going on with that? Yeah, so it was, uh, we entered in with Sand and Lot. Uh, he passed, uh, we thought we were under the assumption that it was uh, uh, not, uh, Mr. Naughton, Harold Naughton, yes. who came in and gave us a presentation right. on uh, the originally. Turns out that the uh, second company had sent the contract roughly the same amount of time and given the presentation, and uh, Naughton's group is the one that is connected to KP Lot that is ours, so I would recommend, uh, since it's only been a couple weeks and they are aware of it, uh, the Sandman group, uh, to discharge them and switch over to Napoli and, and uh, what's the second? Yeah. Go on. Well, it was our intention anyway, so. Just right. He came and made a couple presentations over the years. And as that now uh, gains a little momentum, um, probably uh, better to stick with uh, what is tied to our town council. Yeah. Which is the uh, Napoli, I can't even say the second name. <laughs> 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 I can spell it. 
because it's here. Spinkalink. Cool. Yeah. Been a link kink. Okay, so I would entertain a motion that we move um, discharged uh, Sandman and Company, um, and that has to be the first thing that we do. So I would entertain that motion. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Kill Coyne, aye. Smith, aye. Pants and I. Um, so would be, if people aren't still up on this. This is the PFAs, the litigation that is out there that Harold Naughton had come in actually probably a year ago, gave a presentation all about the water, what's in our water, what's not. And we don't have problems right now, uh, but it's something that we should jump on the bandwagon with. It costs the town nothing to, to be involved in this. And yet if the the suit is settled, then we'll get money like we did with the opioid, opioid crisis. Right. So. Yeah. All right. So then I would entertain a motion that we enter into the uh, retainer agreement with Napoli. And I feel so bad that I can't say this. Shinkalopnik. I thought it was Scott Nicky or Skolnick and uh, Napoli, but. All right. We just put pending review of their contract to make sure it's no different than the other one. Very insignificantly different. Yeah, it was, it was sent to town council and was sent over to me. Yeah. And they're, they're tied to KP. Town council has already looked at it, John. They work okay, with them, they're working on this with them, too. So we're all set good. as far as that's concerned. Thank you. Good. Okay, I'll move that we uh, enter into that contract with uh, Skolnick and... Uh, Napoli. I think I got the name spelled right. Sure. Uh, as, a, as, as worded by Maureen. Seconded. All those in favor? Bill Coyne, aye. Smith, aye. Grants and I. I feel badly, but it's... All right. So um, we were going to do the TA's um, review this evening, or the town administrator's review, but we're going to put that off until our next meeting. Rather do it when John is actually present. Um, as yeah, that's good. Do we have uh, a document uh, all of us to be on the same page like we were with prior administrators, or is this going to be more of an informal uh, uh, verbal? All right, we can talk about that offline, John. All right. We're going to move along now. Okay, okay, good. Thank you. All right, town administrator's report. As you know, the uh, the binder code has been put down in a few places uh, in the paving project. The top code will be done uh, in the upcoming uh, week or so, I believe, uh, as of this afternoon. Uh, we did get a uh, grant award for the DPW grant for some work zone safety uh, signage and ladders and, and OSHA items um, for that. I think it was 3000 3, or so. Um, still waiting to hear on the ADA grant for the beach bathroom. I think it should be either later this month or the beginning of December. Uh, I'm still looking for uh, library board volunteers. Uh, this would go until the next election uh, due to a resignation. Uh, treasurer, and I, <clears throat> treasurer and I are working on, and the accountant, um, the bond sale. Uh, we approved borrowing for $1.3 million at last year's town meeting. and. Um, few hundred thousand dollars for things at uh, the 2021 town meeting uh, so those now officially need to be bonded as those projects uh, get rolling um, so that should be on our December agenda and then we do have our budget requests due uh, in the beginning of January 1-6 and then the capital items are due uh, at the end of next week um, I know I had sent it off uh, economic Development Bill has been uh, passed, it looks like, by the, uh, at the State House and is on the Governor's desk or en route to the Governor's desk. There is a potential for $100,000 for the uh, school playground, which is nearing its completion. They were doing the, uh, the rubber ground floor mat, whatever it is. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that could offset some of the ARPA money. So once we see that happen, um, that's potentially good news. Um, obviously yesterday was election day, so the town clerk and the assistant town clerk and the poll workers, that was a long day for them, and obviously
obviously they should all be thanked. Uh, I already mentioned the playground. It was a pretty good turnout. Very. Uh, two, just over two-thirds, I think. Sixty-something yeah. percent. Yeah. It's pretty good. Uh, my, we did get word that Monty Tech will do the uh, memorial wall in the spring for the Peg's Pond Project walking path. Uh, we have received our quotes um, and we'll get moving forward there uh, as a company, uh, Shrewsbury, that's given us the best price. Um, they do a significant amount of work with SMLD, so uh, hopefully, I don't know if we're going to be able to get any of it done before the spring, but uh, if not, we'll get it done in the spring. Um, nothing new on the beach. I don't think so. Um, we did receive some of the chairs for the 1835. We're going to move forward with the uh, curtains upstairs that were uh, planned in the Great Hall and uh, should be getting the quotes in for the acoustic sound boards up there in the Great Hall as well. And I think and I've already mentioned I was at, a, at the, uh, we had received the grant. I was at the grant award ceremony today for the uh, downtown grant uh, for the engineering for the underground um, work for water main and drainage. Who else went with you, Bill? Anybody? Me. Sorry. Yeah. I had to work for a little bit. I know. Did you work? John sick. <laughs> but that's good. Yep. And how much was that for? One thirty-five and change. So that will uh, get all of the pre pre work good to go good. and paid for. Is that it? We oh and the town hall roof those bids were due. Uh, the engineer or architect is going to do the reference checks. So I don't have an actual name of a company yet that we'll go with. One of them was not uh, not eligible on their bid. I uh, didn't have DKM certification, so we are checking the second lowest bidder. And um, we need to go back and uh, do gentlemen both read the minutes that Thelma has presented us? I did. Any changes? Uh, none. Okay, then I would entertain a motion to approve our meeting minutes of October 26th. Check it. All those in favor? Bill Corn, aye. Smith, aye. Grant and I. Um, oh, just a couple of things. Uh, Veterans Day is Friday. Um, and I know the Senior Center today celebrated the veterans with a luncheon and a dinner. Um, and then we have to say a good thank you to Bobby Temple, who again pulled this thing together. We had a little parade downtown. A ceremony over at the Memorial Park um, wasn't as well publicized as in the past, so we'll have to look at that next year. Um, mark your calendars for no November 19th. The Library Craft Fair will be held over at the First Church from 9 to 2. Um, that's a big deal fundraiser for the library, so whatever support you can give them is a plus. Um, and one thing I forgot to thank Ryan for was fixing the sign at the DPW so it looks decent. There's no more Jersey barriers. It's standing on its own. It's got the right address on it. It's just amazing. Uh -huh. I know. Oh. So cool. But um, David, do you have anything? I just want to thank everybody that came out for the parade on Sunday. And uh, thank, thank our veterans in the community and, and across the country and across the world. And um, Voter turnout was was pretty impressive. I'd like to thank the clerk's office and all the individuals that uh, that keep the polls operating. I mean, we couldn't do it without their volunteer efforts. So, thanks to them. It's a good turnout. John, anything from you? Yeah, yeah I mean, just as what Dave said, I thank uh, Tom Clark, assistant Kathy, and Michelle, and the staff, the volunteers, and front They did a great job working many hours over the last really a couple of months, but especially the last couple of weeks. So thank them, thank the voters for a great turnout. Um, thank the American Legion and uh, Bob Temple for continuing to put on Veterans Day Parade, something not many towns do, was uh, 
It's, ter- it's always terrific. It's just a great thing. And uh, and happy Thanksgiving to everybody. Okay. <laughs> Joey. Uh, I'm starting to do it just to be and Merry Christmas to you, Josh. <laughs> <laughs> Happy Easter while we're at it. You skipped Valentine's Day. Joe, I want that one Come on, Tom, and save me. Anything, Joe, from finance or capital? All set. Okay. Anything you want to remind everybody of? Well, since you're proud to media advertising, we still have one opening on income and we have two openings on the Capital Budget Committee we'd like to fill. So any volunteers out there would be most welcome to talk with them. Thank you. Okay. Pam? Just that the boss is looking, friends of the Sterling Seniors are looking for volunteers. We need them desperately. Yep. Friends of the Sterling Seniors the group that raises funds to support programming and nutrition programs, et cetera, at the Senior Center um, could use some fresh new eyes and bodies. You can talk to Pam, you can talk to myself, you can send me a message on the Facebook page, it'd be great. Anything from you, Richard? All set. Veronica, all set? All set, thank you. Susie Q? All set. Liz? Thanks for coming back, Gail. How was dinner? <laughs> Great. <laughs> Comma? Okay. And Billy, you're all set. All set. All right. I will take a motion. One second. Uh, uh, uh. Just one second. Um, we just tonight approved a, um, a permit for 275. Right. Um, if it's all right with the board, I would like to make that for... 2023, so he doesn't have to reapply right now because it's the next meeting that we have is when all the all of them would need to come forward. So as long as it's all right with you, I'm okay with that. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. No, it's it's um it's an extension of his business. Yeah. Okay. It's not going to have a different impact on the neighbors or. Anything. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Common. With that. Oh, take a motion to adjourn. Yeah, that's very exciting right now. Uh, I make a motion to adjourn. Second. Boy, I. Smith, I. Grant, and I. Good night, John. Good night, everybody. Have a great evening. That's worse than. Good night, Mr. Calabash. I'm sorry. At least Zoom, you can mute people. <laughs> 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 <laughs>